Hey everybody, Mark Fox here with Amazing Prophecies YouTube channel, Forever Free Ministries, coming to you tonight from Dallas, Texas, live. So many biblical signs are flashing like neon lights. They're blaring at us like loud tornado sirens that we are living in the last days of Earth's history. Ready or not, Jesus is coming sooner than most realize. It's not one sign that demands our attention, but rather countless biblical signs, prophetic signs, that are in plain sight, beckoning us to prepare for the biblical prophetic tribulation. In this live broadcast, in this video, we will take a look at a number of news stories that are nothing short of end time signs. NASA, for example, is issuing a warning about an asteroid, and no, it will not not plan to hit planet Earth, but there's something different about this one coming September 1. More about that in a moment. Meteorologists are issuing warnings to the U.S. about deadly heat waves hitting the West, uh, breaking records, shattering records. Seismologists are revealing a new known phenomenon of boomerang earthquakes, a term I've never heard. And something is happening uh, very catastrophically in China. What is it? Africa is being plagued by grasshoppers and meteorologists are sounding the warning that this hurricane season may be different. And so that and more, you don't want to miss this very special broadcast. Stay tuned. Okay, just before we dive into this very uh, powerful topic, we have a lot of signs of the times we're going to be focusing on. But first, free book. Click on link below. I know many of you have heard me promoting this for quite some time. It's because it's such a provocative, such a blockbuster, such a powerful book and content that you need to get. All you need to do is just click on the link below. You'll see that in the description. Click on the link below for the free book, Mark of the Beast. If you can, you can give a donation. It's appreciated, but not required. And you'll see how you can click on the button of uh, donation in the description there once you click on the link. Okay, so also Forever Free Ministries, School of Evangelism in the Philippines. Want to learn more or you want to give us your prayer requests? Amazing Prophecies at Gmail or your Bible questions from around the world. Amazing Prophecies at Gmail.com. We can help you find a church, whether you're in the Philippines or wherever you are that is preaching what we are on our channel. There have been over 50 baptisms as a result of our Forever Free Ministries School of Evangelism in the Philippines. And so also you can join our Facebook group, Memorizing God's Word Together, and another one called The Joy of the Sabbath. The Joy of the Sabbath. Hope you can join both of those. You can call for prayer as well. In the United States, call 833- 211 4878 or you can email that to us amazing prophecies at gmail.com also if you text the word bible to the number 74121 we can give you links to a church preaching what we are we can give you a link to a free online bible course and more okay away we go this is another signs alert signs update september 1 is coming and an asteroid is coming not to hit earth but it's going to come close according to the news asteroid will buzz earth closer than the moon on september 1st i don't know if that causes you to perk up and pay attention and this is what the news is telling us what it's telling us is that an asteroid will soon come closer to Earth than the moon, and a doomsday preacher is warning, this is Paul Begley they're referring to, it could be an apocalyptic fireball prophesied in the Bible. Asteroid 2011 ES4 is expected to skim past our planet on September 1 at 10.49 a.m. The rocky visitor measuring between 22 and 49 meters in diameter will fly uh, astronomical units away from Earth at about 44,618 miles at a speed of 18,253 miles per hour. Well, the moon is 238,855 miles from Earth, so 2011 AS4 will skim by considerably closer than our lunar neighbor. 
It, it's considered a potentially hazardous asteroid based on certain NASA criteria. Potentially hazardous asteroids are currently defined based on parameters that measure the asteroid's potential to make threatening close approaches to the Earth. And so here again, we know that uh, it is possible, it's in the realm of possibility that one day uh, some asteroids are gonna hit this planet and cause uh, uh, catastrophic damage, apocalyptic damage. We know there is that possibility. And, uh, but we don't need any unnecessary hype. The reason I'm bringing this to your attention is because this one is closer than the moon on September 1. And we do cover meteorites here once in a while. Okay, so weather, 130 degrees. <laughs> this is absolutely mind boggling. Death Valley sees what could be record heat. The temperature at Death Valley National Park hit a scorching 130 degrees on Sunday, marking what could be the hottest temperature on Earth. Notice where? California. Since at least 1913, the National Weather Service says any visitors to the park are getting blunt advice. Travel prepared to survive. 133 degrees recorded at the Furnace Creek Visitor Center is the hottest August temperature ever recorded at the National Park, which sits along California and Nevada's border. Weather experts say it could also be the world's modern era high because Death Valley's 1913 record of 134 degrees has been disputed as unreliable. Yesterday's incendiary temperature reading was has not taken by a human, but by an automated observation system. The preliminary reading is now process of being officially verified. So as this is an extreme temperature event, the recorded temperature will need to go undergo formal review is what they're saying. And so dozens of heat records set to be broke this week as Western heat wave continues, whether it's in Salt Lake City, 104, Sacramento, 110, Los Angeles, 93. Today, uh, Phoenix, yesterday, 115, today, 113. Even here in uh, Dallas, our temperatures are 102 uh, degrees, some higher, some lower in the DFW area. And the Western US and Southwest Canada are bracing for another week of extreme heat as dozens of temperature records are expected to be broken from Montana to Southern California. 56 million people are under excessive heat warnings or heat advisories, especially there in California. Well, once again, New York Times reports, Washington Post reports, Market Watch reports, what? Fire tornadoes reported in Northern California wildfire. So the National Weather Service issued an unusual warning on Saturday about the possibility of a fire-induced tornado. Unbelievable. A Washington Post, a freak fire tornado Warning was issued in California Saturday amid swarm of spinning blazes. So this series of fire tornadoes, genuine twisters made of smoke, and there you see the picture, and flames struck Lassen County, California on Saturday, churning around. Um, Market Watch, California plagued by scorching heat, 130 degrees, lightning, lightning fires, blackouts, and even fire tornadoes. What in the world is going on in California? Is God trying to get our attention? Are these judgments of God? Are we heading closer, faster to the tribulation? Fire tornado, weather, service, issues, what could be a first at California blaze. The Reno office of the National Weather Service warned Northern California of a fire tornado Saturday afternoon that had sprung up near a large, fast-moving wildfire in the Sierra. Uh, fire NATO, it is the first known issuance of a tornado warning for the climate phenomenon since its burst into California's consciousness during the deadly car fire in 2018. You remember that wreaked havoc there and decimation there in paradise and elsewhere. And so winds hit 60 miles per hour in the area, whipping up the cloud, posing an extremely dangerous situation for firefighters, according to the warning. The Loyalton 
fire to the east of the Sierra Valley exploded most impressively this afternoon with a large uh, fire cumulus and reports of fire tornadoes, the warning said, due to the possibility of very strong fire generated winds and extreme fire behavior with danger to fire personnel. A tornado issue warning was issued to heighten awareness in the area of the fire. Then, in addition to that, lights dim and worries mount as a heat wave roasts California, overwhelmed by demand. California's power grid imposed rotating blackouts while the coronavirus uh, crisis created a dilemma for those who were unable to stay cool at home. In other words, they're kind of wondering, okay, what do I do? What do I do? There's no power. It's getting hot here. Is there some place, a public place I can go to cool off? Oh, wait a minute, the virus. And so this is a dilemma. A heat wave rolling through the Southwest has forced intermittent power shutoffs in California state, already struggling with wildfires and a recent surge in coronavirus cases, raising fears that the rising temperatures could turn deadly. California used so much, used so much electricity to try and stay cool Friday night that the agency that oversees much of the state's power grid declared an emergency. And for the first time in 19 years, shut off power to hundreds of thousands of customers for several hours to avoid a damaging overload, to try to avoid a collapse. And so the sweltering heat comes as coronavirus cases are on the rise in California, which reported more than 65,000 new cases and about 950 related deaths over just the past week. The pandemic is taking away one of the most critical resources for the most vulnerable, and that is, of course, electricity needed. And so, guess what? An article here I just had to draw your attention to, a mass exodus away from big cities on both coasts, whether it's New York or California. In all of US history, we have never seen anything like the mass exodus of 2020. Hundreds of thousands of people are leaving the major cities on both coasts in search for a better life. Homelessness, crime and drugs use were already on the rise in many of our large cities prior to 2020, but many big city residents were willing to put up with a certain amount of chaos in order to maintain their lifestyles. However, the COVID-19 pandemic and months of civil unrest have finally pushed a lot of people over the edge. In other words, they're saying enough is enough. Moving companies on both coasts are doing a booming business as wealthy and middle-class families flee at a blistering pace. And most of those families do not plan to, to ever return. In other words, they're saying that is it. I'm out of the big cities. Los Angeles is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Once upon a time, it attracted wealthy and famous people from all over the globe. But in 2020, it is a city on the brink. And so there is a mass exodus, for example, from Hollywood. And um, almost half of the entire homeless population of the entire country now lives in the state of California and a large proportion of them are addicted to drugs. Needles to say, this has created, needless to say, this has created a nightmarish environment. Junkies and the homeless, many of whom are clearly mentally ill, walk the palm lined streets like zombies, all just three blocks from multi-million dollar homes overlooking the Pacific Ocean. And so in the worst, what about LA? The worst economic conditions become the worse the problem gets. Crime is skyrocketing in LA and some residents have been shocked to discover strangers. Well, I don't even want to get into that. And so on, on a per capita basis, drug use is even worse in San Francisco. A mass exodus of people looking to get out of San Francisco real estate. According to online real estate company Zillow, there is a mass exodus of people looking to get out of San Francisco real estate. And so, yes, there's an exodus out of the, some of the mega cities. The civil unrest in Seattle never seems to end. An acting Department of Homeland Security Secretary Chad Wolf recently said that there had been 12 official riots in the first 10 days after the federal law enforcement officials left Portland, Oregon. Sadly, 
The East Coast has experienced plenty of chaos as well. The mass exodus out of New York City has been particularly dramatic. In a previous article I discussed, anyway, 420,000 420, New Yorkers had moved out of the city between March 1st and May 1st. That's like a huge city moving completely out of uh, New York City area. And so according to a uh, local Fox affiliate, um, between May and July, there was a 95% year over year increase in interest in moving out of Manhattan. And so um, between the pandemic and the riots in this city, um, iconic Fifth Avenue now looks more like a dystopian nightmare in a recently shot video posted uh, to Twitter. In other words, it looks like a demilitarized zone is what one person described it as. And so what about, what about farmland troubles? Oh yeah, big time. Millions of acres of crops in the central U.S. have been destroyed by a series of historic natural disasters. While the mainstream media focuses on the upcoming election and COVID-19 and the endless protests going on in our major cities, another great tragedy is unfolding all across the middle of the country. A nightmarish drought, horrific flooding along the Mississippi River and a giant derecho uh, that just hit the farm belt have combined to make this one of the toughest years for re uh, farmers ever. And so the storm had winds up to 120 miles per hour near Cedar Rapids, Iowa, as powerful as an inland hurricane as it tore from eastern Nebraska across Iowa and parts of Wisconsin, Indiana, and Illinois, including Chicago and suburbs. And it was like a hurricane. For the second year in a row, widespread flooding has left hundreds of thousands of acres of farmland underwater, ruining entire harvests. And now with their fields submerged, farmers are bracing for another year of no income. And then, as if that all is not enough, Weather experts issue most threatening hurricane forecasts yet. In 2020, Atlantic hurricane season is racking up storms at breakneck speed. To date, the season is about two weeks ahead of a record pace, and it's only one third of the way through. And so on Wednesday, the news became more concerning as the research team at Colorado State University, the standard bear for seasonal forecasts, released the most dire forecast in their 37-year history. Do you hear that? These are signs of the times, everybody. Labeling the 2020 hurricane season extremely active, the team is now predicting 24 named storms, including 12 total hurricanes and five major hurricanes, each figure about double that of a normal season. If the forecast proves accurate, 2020 would be the second most active Atlantic hurricane season behind only the record shattering 2005 season, which brought hurricane, hurricanes Katrina and Wilma. And so here you see a graph, here you see a chart of this. So you can expect that we're gonna see more intense hurricanes and more frequent hurricanes. There you see the comparison of 2020 forecast as of August 5, 2020. And in addition, they're forecasting a 75% chance that the U.S. coast will be struck by a major hurricane category three or greater during the 2020 season. This is significantly Big, this is significant because damage increases exponentially with wind speed. Category 3, 4, and 5 system cause 85% of all hurricane damage. So it could be catastrophic, apocalyptic, absolutely. Then, as if that's not enough, what's going on in China? CNN, everything is gone. Flooding in China ruins farmers and risks fly, rising uh, food prices. And. Uh, National Public Radio, NPR, says roads become rivers. Nearly four million Chinese evacuated or displaced from flooding. First, China was hit by the no novel coronavirus. Now it's dealing with the worst flooding in more than 20 years across vast swaths of territory. And so why tr China's, okay, so let's just keep going here. 
Financial Times Be Beijing on flood alert as rains hamper China's economic recovery. And don't have time to get into all of that, but certainly historic floods hitting China. As if that's not enough. Remember, special broadcast tonight, going in rapid fire one sign after the other, and I'm gonna give you scriptures in a moment. The biblical locust plagues of 2020. East Africa is seeing its worst swarms of locusts in many decades. How can these ravenous pests be stopped? Experts are concerned that swarms later in the year will be even larger. And so each uh, can consume 2G of vegetation uh, every day. Combined, a swarm of 80 million can consume food equivalent to that eaten by 35,000 people a day. And so in 2020, locusts have swarmed in large numbers in dozens of countries, including Kenya, Ethiopia, Uganda, Somalia, Eritrea, India, Pakistan, Iran, and Yemen, and Oman, and Saudi Arabia. When swarms affect several countries at once in very large numbers, it is known as a what, everybody? A plague. A plague. So this is catastrophic, and um, don't have time to go into all of the details about this, but this locust invasion is more than a challenge. It is a matter of life and death. The locusts are not likely to go away soon. This is because of erratic weather, which has led to prolonged rains, is providing the pests with enough vegetation to keep them fed and breeding. This is catastrophic, what's going on. So look here, everybody, I'll tell you what, I want to give you some scriptures. Clearly, Jesus said that there would be signs in the sky and on the earth. And uh, I've got a message coming up very soon about are we living proof that we're living in the sixth seal and uh, about signs in the heavens. And I'll, I'm just giving you a little announcement ahead of time that I'll be dealing with that. And we also have another video coming up very soon called The Mark of the Beast. Clear identification of what is the mark of the beast. It's not what you think. And so uh, what does the Bible say? In, um, in scripture, I want to read you a scripture here in Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. Go there in our Bible here. Luke chapter 21 and verse number 25. If it's in the Bible, we want it. If it's not in the Bible, we don't want it. So this is Luke 21, all righty, verse 25. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations. With perplexity, the sea and waves roaring. What gets the sea and the waves roaring? Hurricanes, tsunamis, and what would cause a concern of what's going on with the water? Global warming is causing the sea level to rise. What does this cause? Coastal flooding and threatening coastal cities. And so many of the Earth's population live in coastal cities, and some of which are very vulnerable to tsunamis and to hurricanes and so forth. And so men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the Earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And so the, this is Jesus. And words are in red in this red letter edition of the Bible. I believe the Bible. Do you believe the Bible? If you believe the Bible, go ahead and comment below. Say, I believe the Bible. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is an opportunity for you to respond. Do you believe the Bible? Just go ahead and say, Mark, I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible. Let everybody know. Because people read these comments, people look at the comments, and I want you to have this opportunity to testify. Do you believe the Bible? It's been said the Bible stands for basic instruction before leaving earth. Well, anyway, we know this is God's holy word. It's inspired. We want to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, according to Matthew 4.4 4 and Luke 4.4. 4. And so what does Jesus say here? Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up, don't look down, look up 
and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. So the bad news is a reminder of, look up, the good news is coming. The bad news is a reminder of the good news that Jesus Christ's coming is imminent. We are racing towards the tribulation and right after the tribulation, Jesus is going to come in the sky. I want to be ready. I want my family ready. We want to be ready. You want to be ready? Go ahead and type in. Just say, Jesus, help me to be ready for your second coming. Jesus, help me to be ready. Go ahead. This is your opportunity. This is a way that you say amen. Because when people come together to worship God, they need to say amen. They need to praise the Lord. They need to give verbal affirmation that what they're hearing is true. It's all through the Bible that if you believe something is true, say so. Uh, praise the Lord. Say amen. And in other words, with the heart, man believes unto salvation. With the mouth, we make confession, according to Romans 10. And so Jesus is saying, when these things happen, when there are floods, when there are uh, catastrophic floods, when there are uh, very intense apocalyptic type hurricanes, Jesus is saying, look up, sea level rising, look up, fire, fire nados, fire tornadoes, look up, catastrophic uh, locusts consuming so much vegetation and really threatening so many people's uh, food. And so look up. And then what about the asteroids and so forth? Well, look up, look to Jesus. What about all of these other things that we went through? What about an exodus from California or an exodus from mega cities? Look up. This is no time to look down. This is no time to be discouraged. It's time to be encouraged. This is not a time to have a shaky faith, but a solid faith. This is no time to take off the armor of God. It's a time to put on the armor of God. This is no time to give up. This is a time to, well, if you want to give up, give up sin, but don't give up your faith. Galatians 5 verse, um, pardon me, uh, Galatians 6 verse 9, we are told, don't give up. Read Galatians 6 verse 9, don't give up. Luke 18, 1 to 8, also there, Jesus makes it very clear, don't give up. And a sign that you don't give up, you keep praying. Don't give up praying. You say, Mark, I feel so weak. Mark, I'm so afraid. Look up. Look to Jesus. You know, in Numbers 21, when the children of Israel were wandering in the wilderness, they began to complain. And as they engaged in that complaining uh, spree, a complaining spree, um, then snakes came out of, ven venomous snakes came out of the rocks and started biting the Israelites and many died. And there were shrieks of terror uh, that pierced the midnight air. And so what happened? Then Moses was instructed by God to make a bronze or brass serpent, put it on a pole, put it on a stick, and as it would be erected there in full view of the children of Israel, God said, if they look at the snake, they'll be saved. Even if they've been bitten, they'll be saved. And so that's exactly what happened. Moses simply said, look and live, look and live. And so those who are perishing, they only had one hope, and that is to look at the serpent, the bronze serpent, which is a type or an illustration of Jesus dying on the cross. But why the, why the serpent? Because the serpent is a symbol of the curse of sin. Remember when the serpent would be cursed and have to slither around on the ground? Well, Galatians 3.13 makes it very clear that Jesus took the curse of sin on himself. He died not for his sins because he never sinned. He died for our sins. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 3 makes it very clear that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, to be crucified for our sins. Thank Jesus. Are you thankful? Do you want to right now say, Jesus, thank you for dying for me? Go ahead and type it in there. Jesus, thank you for dying for me. And um, I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is coming very soon. But in the meantime, what do we do in this intervening time known as the time of the end? 
as we see the signs of the times, it should drive us to our knees in repentance and contrition and confession of sin and to say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Read that in Luke 18, verse 13. Notice, as my custom is, I give you scriptures and scripture references because we don't just cover current events. We do it in the context of Bible prophecies and Bible scriptures and so forth. And so that's why I quote many of these scriptures and I give you scripture references. By the way, sometimes people might say, Mark, I don't really like reading. You need to get used to reading. God gave us a reading book. You got to love to read. If you say, well, I don't really like to read, you need to ask the Lord to help you to love to read. Jesus took time to bleed. We should take time to read. We should read and read and read his word. That's what he wants us to do. And not just read, study it. That is, try to understand what you're reading. All right. And the Bible is its own interpreter. You know, scripture explains scripture. You compare scripture with scripture and then you come to a conclusion of what is the truth and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. John 8 and verse 32. And so some of you need to be baptized. Some of you need to be baptized. I want to hear from you. If you want to comment below, say, I need to be baptized. Or you can comment below, I've already been baptized. We're good and good to go. But if you want to be baptized in the near future, you need to go ahead and email me. Amazing Prophecies, name of our channel, amazingprophecies at gmail.com. Just email me and say, Mark, I live in Ethiopia. Mark, I live in South Africa. Mark, I live in San Francisco. Mark, I live in Toronto, Canada. Wherever you are coming from, whether it's the Philippines or India or the UK, wherever you're coming from, email me. If you want to be baptized, email me. Furthermore, if you believe the Sabbath, that is the seventh day of the week, read it in the Ten Commandments, not the Ten Suggestions, the Ten Commandments, Ten Fingers, Ten Toes, Ten Commandments, Exodus 20, and the seventh day is the Sabbath, that's Saturday. If you want to find a church that is uplifting Bible prophecy like we are on our channel and is also honoring the seventh day Sabbath, preaching Christ, the two C words, preach Christ and his commandments, and you want to find a church, we can help you. All you have to do is just email me. Email me, amazingprophecies at gmail.com, and we'll give you a link. Or you can text. Text the word Bible to the number 74121. Just get your phone out and text the word Bible to the number 74121, and then we can give you a link to a church uh, preaching what we are, honoring the Seventh-day Sabbath. So, do you want to be baptized? Let us know. Do you want to find a church that uplifts what we are on our channel and honors the Sabbath? Let us know. We want to hear from you. Also, if you can stand with us this month, remember those who give bountifully shall reap bountifully according to 2 Chronicles, pardon me, 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 to 9. Yes, we appreciate you guys standing with us. Make sure you get the book, Mark of the Beast, by clicking the link below. And then when you get that link and you download the Mark of the Beast book, you can also see a link there of being able to give if you would like to give. So write me also. You can write our address or if you want to send a donation that way or you want to write us a letter. Uh, it's very easy. It's Forever Free Ministries. It'll be in the description. Forever Free Ministries, P.O. Box, 785 P.O. Box 785 Lake Dallas Lake Dallas Texas 75065 75065 Forever Free Ministries P.O. Box 785 Lake Dallas Texas 75065 and also don't forget you can call us anytime and if we don't get to you right away, don't worry, our staff will get to you. The phone number will be in the description as well. Here's the phone number. We want to hear from you. You can call us right now. 833-211-4878. Once again, 833-211-4878. So 
You have no excuse. You can connect with us. You can, you can connect with us. We're here to minister. Our staff is here. Our volunteers are here. And uh, we have people ready to take your prayer requests and to pray over those prayer requests. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ. There's power in the blood. There's power in the Word of God. There is power in the Word of God. God spoke and He created the worlds. God spoke and it's here. His word is all powerful. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says the word of God is alive and is powerful. And so read that in Hebrews 4 and verse number uh, 12. And I want you to notice that on Monday nights and on Thursday nights, Monday and Thursday, we are now, we began this last week, we are now coming to you live, twice a week coming to you live, Monday night, Thursday night during the week and then a special um, a video upload coming on the weekend. So we are seeking to be very consistent that and we were this past week consistent and so you are receiving from us three um, broadcasts, three videos, two live broadcasts Monday and Thursday night and the time is 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tonight we got started a little late, but we'll be on time on Thursday night, Lord willing. Please keep us in your prayers. Can you type below and say, Mark, I'm praying for you and your family. We really and our staff, pray for our staff, pray for our School of Evangelism in the Philippines. Pray for our prayer warriors and our uh, online Bible workers and yeah, we need, we need prayer. Pray also as we're training others to do YouTube evangelism. Pray that God will guide us and direct us in that. Well, I just want to uh, recognize some who've joined us here. Type and let me know. Caleb, maybe you can get that on here. I want to know what countries you're from, what cities you're from. I just want to recognize you. If you can give us super chat, that's wonderful if you can. Caleb's gonna bring it over here to me just for a minute so I can see and recognize uh, who's joining us here tonight. It's exciting to come to you live. I wish I had been doing this consistently for five years, but the Lord has really impressed me. Go live, 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 and, um, and seek to really engage and, and, and get close to uh, our followers and so forth. Not sure how many are watching us right now. Caleb will bring that up on the screen here in a moment. Okay, so uh, d let's see. Daniel lives in Toronto. Jessica's Bakersfield. All right. Jordan is in England. Uh, Jania in Kansas. Nikki, Mississippi. Rose is Chicago. Oh, Lily, Switzerland. April is Virginia. Muskegon. Hey, Muskegon, wait a minute. Oh, that's uh, Celtic. Muskegon is where my wife and I had our uh, wedding, um, our honeymoon. <laughs> and Joseph. Mark, I'm in from the Philippines. All right, Mavis, thank you that you're praying for us. Thank you, Mavis. I don't take that for granted. We need your prayers. Um, okay, Tanya is in Dallas. Are you really, Tanya? Well, reach out to us. And uh, we, uh, we go to church here in McKinney. And okay, so uh, Daryl is in uh, Detroit. D is Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Thank you, Treman. Oh, Treman, good to see you again. Pray for Mark. Sonia. Rochester, all right. Felicia is from Maine, Lewiston, Maine, and uh, Christian from Dunn, North Carolina, uh, and then Madison, all right. Let me see, Timothy Hope, Arizona. How many are, how many are watching us now, Kalen? Pardon? Okay, very good. And so, Carla, Marshall, Texas, very good. Uh, Santina, New Mexico. Joni is from India, and from New Jersey. Okay, Twin Falls, Idaho. We're coming up to Idaho in October for three weeks. We're gonna be at Sandpoint, giving a three-week Bible prophecy seminar there in Idaho. Hey, if you're from Idaho, I wanna hear from you. I want you to email me, amazingprophecies at gmail.com. And I may be coming to a city near you and offering a free dinner at a at Italian or some type of nice restaurant there. We've been doing this a number of times and so you can let us know if you'd like to meet us and so forth. We usually have a group of anywhere from 10, 15, 20, 30 people. 
and depending. And so George, Florida, Ilana, uh, North Dakota, Karina, New York. Very good. And uh, okay, Nadine is from the Philippines. Be faithful, Minnesota. Oh, Dan is from Baton Rouge. We want to come down there sometime. We want to come down there sometime. Carrollton, very good. Okay, gaming there. Uh, Heyman is from St. George, Utah. Yeah, Nadine, Philippines. All right, and Jan is from South Africa. And um, Christopher is from Seattle, Washington. Tammy from Alabama. Jacqueline from Newport, uh, Newport News, uh, Virginia. Very good. And um, Marcus, North Carolina. Very good. Okay, uh, Michelle is from Marina Valley, California. Marcus, North Carolina. Okay, Samantha, we're gonna be coming sometime to Philadelphia. My wife's uh, family lives in Allentown. We're gonna come there, love to meet you, Samantha. Samantha Fox, come on. I'm Mark Fox, but you got two X's, how about that? Um, Ruth from India. And Banzel from Canada, what part of Canada? Guam, Cecilia from Guam. Albino from Australia. Hope of Glory from Ethiopia. Very good, from Ethiopia. Uh, Rebecca from Arkansas. What part of Arkansas? We love Beaver Lake there in Arkansas. We vacationed there. And so uh, Doug from Lathrop, California. Uh, Ziggy there from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And Wayfair Union. Where is Union, Kentucky? Because we're going to be coming to Lexington sometime. We've already been to Louisville. Probably go again sometime. Uh, okay, Super Odyssey is Ohio. Claudia from Oxnard, California. Tanzania, very good. Tanzania and Hong Kong. And another one, Joshua from the Philippines. Simply me, Michigan. Michigan. Richards from Myrtle Beach. Ronzel is from Toronto, Canada. And Anthony is from Las Vegas, Nevada. King Sean is from Philadelphia, very good. Love to meet you guys. Panama, Al is from Panama. And Zerica, uh, yeah, sometime soon, we're gonna come to New Jersey this year, we believe. Okay, come to Muskegon, Michigan, yeah, we'd love to. And um, yeah, all it takes is uh, really a local church inviting us uh, or sponsors. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, uh, we'll be traveling all over. Okay, Christ Forgive Us is from Idaho. What part of Idaho? Okay, somebody from Frisco, all right, Northern Kentucky, okay, in Frisco, Texas. Thank you, Moses, for saying you'll pray for us. Marcar Macardo, Brooks, Jamaica, very good. Patty, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, when you're coming to Falcon, ask when are we coming to G Georgia? Maybe later this year, we're just not sure. Okay, Gabby's from New Zealand. Hope all is well there. You know, the COVID cases are growing there. God, David from, uh, from Oklahoma, very good. What part of Oklahoma? Brenda, Atlanta, Georgia. Very good. Uh, Donna, upstate New York. Farrah, Fair Oaks, California. And uh, Randy is in Madison, Ohio. And Tom is uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. Brenda Lowe is Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, Felicia, thank you so much. She says, have to go, phone is dying. Much love in Christ. Yeah. Praise the Lord, I just wanted to, I don't always do this, but I just thought, let me try to give you guys a shout out. Stand with us this month. Most importantly, pray for us. Please let us pray for one another. And I'm just so thankful that you all are writing. Okay, so uh, Rebecca is from Fort Smith, very good. Yeah, well, we did an event uh, there, uh, Rebecca. We did an event there in Rogers. We got together at an Italian, uh, was it Italian or what, Mexican I don't know, a restaurant and we had, I don't know, what did we have there? I think we had about 20 people came out all together. We had a great time. My family and I were with us. So we might be coming back up there. At least that's the plan. We want to go back up there to Northwest Arkansas and also Little, Little Rock as well. So, okay. Uh, Federico from Southern Cameroon in Africa, very good. Um, Mississippi, very good. Lily says, thank you for your channel. 
for your faith, for your teachings. Praise the Lord for that. And um, yes, thank you, Karina. Says I'll pray for you guys. We really, really appreciate that. Okay, Ferdinino Beach, Florida. Very good. June says prayer sent. Thank you so much, June, for that. Really appreciate it. Um, Jacqueline, please come to Newport News. Mark, no one ever comes here. Well, we may be coming. We don't know. Just pray. Pray the Lord will guide and direct. Thank you, Nikki. Good to have you, Nikki. Uh, Kristen, I have email you for baptized. Yeah, if you want to be baptized, you're in the Dallas area. We could, but wherever you're from, we can try to help and uh, get you ready for an event like that and give you links and so forth. So, yeah. All right, everybody. It's just great hanging out with you all and just like to, uh, you know, recognize and say your names as, uh, as I read them off here. And I just uh, enjoy the fellowship. So twice a week, Monday, Thursday night during the week, boom, we're right here. We're live. We usually go live for, you know, there's no set time. It can be an hour. It can be less than an hour. Um, and so, yeah, we go live and then we're back here again Thursday night. And then on the weekend, we have another broadcast that goes uh, or uploaded video on Saturday or Sunday. And so, yeah, Dolly says I need to be rebaptized. Email me. Email me, Dolly, at amazingprophecies at gmail.com. Who else is needing to be baptized? Okay, Mick George is from Tampa, Florida. So yeah, get a hold of me, Dolly. Let me know where you're from. Okay, you have family. Rebecca has family and Roger. Super, super. Yeah, we want to come back. We'll probably go to the same restaurant we went to last time. I can't remember the name of it. But, um, okay, 8 Glocky. I'm from Houston. I need to be baptized. Email me, man. Email me. Just email me. Amazingprophecies at gmail.com. Yanat Hagos. I want to be baptized, Mark. Email me. I'm 13 and I pray and try to be close to God, but I don't feel anything. God loves you. God loves you. Let this young man know God loves you. God loves you. And read the Bible and find some Christian friends and never give up. Be of good courage. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. That's the main thing of my broadcast. You say, I thought the main thing of your, your broadcast is amazing prophecies. Yes, but what's the point? Prophecy is all about how God is in control of the past, present, and future, and He is in control and he's gonna take us home to heaven. What is that? Love. It's all about love. Okay, Mick George. Okay, he wants to be rebaptized. Another one should be rebaptized. Many of you are saying you wanna be baptized. Email me, email me, amazingprophecies at gmail.com. Me, say, Mark, uh, how can you get me ready for baptism? We'll give you links to different things you can watch, you can read. I have a playlist that we'll give you a link to. You can check my playlist. Does the Bible support rebaptism? Absolutely. I have been rebaptized myself. Um, now, it doesn't mean, you know, if you make a mistake, you need to be rebaptized. But if you'd like to know more about that, you can just email me. Okay. Linda's from Alvin, Texas. Very good. Not exactly sure where Alvin is from, but Mario is from, from Melbourne. Very good. All right. Danielle says, let God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Anyway, this has been great. I want to hear from you guys. Let me pray. Father in heaven, I pray until we meet again with your precious people, that you would just pour out your Holy Spirit on every single person that's open to receive the Holy Spirit. Purify our minds, Lord. Help us to think like Jesus. Help us to receive the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of Christ. Oh, Lord, give us that born-again experience again and again and again. 
and bless all my precious friends from around the world. May we look up because Jesus is coming soon. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, you can call us 833-211-4878. And so this is Mark Fox signing off for now. Remember, Jesus saves you.